G'day viewers, welcome to this week's PB's Retro Restorations. This week I'm doing this Dinky 161 Ford Mustang Fastback that belonged to my Uncle Phil. I inherited it from him in his collection. Now you might be wondering how it can be such awful condition when it's still got its box, which isn't in great shape itself. And the answer for that is my Uncle Phil used to look after his cars, but my mum, his sister, used to insist on letting me play with them and four-year-old me did some terrible things to those cars and this is one of them. My Uncle Phil was a legend. He loved cars. I've, I've mentioned my Uncle Phil before. He loved cars. It didn't matter what brand it was. He just loved cars. He wasn't able to drive himself so he was never able to own a car of his own so he lived that life through die-cast vehicles and trust me he had hundreds of them. So the very least I can do to honor Phil, Uncle Phil's memory is try and right the four-year-old me wrong <laughs> and uh, try and fix this and bring it back to the way it looked like when he bought it new and before I got my young hands on it. So let's get cracker lacking, see what we can't do here and see if we can't um, make it good again for you Uncle Phil. Now I know I did that. Sorry, Uncle Phil. See? Busted all the seats out. I'm pretty sure I did that too. It's supposed to have stickers on the backs of the doors. On the upside, the bonnet's not stamped up and the plastic engine's still in there. It's got both of its little clear headlights. I'm not sure if they come out. Hubcaps are really good. They just need to re chrome and they're not smashed about. So, once I get the rivet off, pull the base off. I'm not going to paint this base, so I'm going to leave that original. I'm going to re chrome those hubs, but that's all I'm doing to the base. The engine, engine's pretty good, but I'm going to give it another dust with the Molotov, just shine it back up. Here's the interior missing those seat bucket backs which I have got replacements for. The bonnet comes out backwards and the dashboard holds the doors in and it's a bit of a... anyway caused me a few conniptions getting them back in. It gave me a couple getting them out but not as much as getting them back in but I got them back in as you'll see. Now the glass is in excellent shape for some reason, somehow it survived. Rear bumper's there, but it's pretty knocked about. I did buy a pair of replacement bumpers, so I'll probably replace it. Now the headlights, this one popped out real easy. The other one, didn't want a bar of it, but I got them both out in the end. hand brushing the paint stripper on the doors because I don't want to remove those plastic pieces from the back so I'm being very careful and now it's Dremel time <laughs> that's it I'm not doing it for the whole video I'm sorry but I, I got oh, the bonus bit So the hinges on the boot lid were both intact, they were just bent out of shape, that's why the boot lid was coming off. So you know, make or break, I thought I'll try and tweak them back into place and you know what I did and they didn't snap off and it was good practice for another project I've got coming up, I'm going to try and do this but I probably should have heated them but I was lucky. Uncle Phil must have been watching over me. more for you at no added extra cost.
So here we go with the first coat of white. Um, I went over it a few times and I did wet sand it in between coats on this one. I went to a little bit extra effort because it was Uncle Phil's car and um, I think it was well worth it in the end. I did clear coat it of course over the top of the decals once they've been applied and uh, well you can see the results at the end. I was quite pleased with it. So onto the case, the bottom is disintegrating, the card was okay, and the case had all this yellow tape from someone trying to fix it. Uh, I thought I could apply some of the same um, techniques that I use on interior glass on this case, you know, sand it, dip it in, whatever, didn't really work. I was going to try and mend this base, uh, but every time I touched it, it seemed to crack and another piece would break off it. So in the end I just decided to stabilise that so it wouldn't fall apart anymore and I had even less luck on the top. But anyway, here I am masking the base off so I can just molotow those hubcaps. All right, time to put those tires back on. And I'll tell you something for free, dear viewer. What a mongrel these were to get back on. I thought for sure I'm going to take the chrome back off the wheels, but I didn't. But hooly dooly, they're just... I thought the rubber was going to break before they went on, but they didn't. And I got all four of them back on without incident. Apart from me swearing at it a bit. But, I, you know, you don't want to hear all that, I don't think. Now here I am using 3000 grade Tamiya finishing sandpaper just to give it a wet, wet sand between coats. I think it really does make a difference in the end result. So this is one of those times I was smart enough to take some images of the decals before I stripped it. So I was able to finoodle them on the computer. But I have to give a massive shout out here to my DMC connection. Both Nigel Scarlett and Martin Dare who hooked me up with the decal, well with images of the decals for the grill and the door cards which I was able to finoodle, make reproductions of. I've sent them out some sets of them for their trouble. Um, I couldn't have done it without you guys. And one thing I noticed and discovered while doing that is there's actually two or three variations on the grill decal, which I won't punish you with. But I got the right one. It worked out really well. And thanks very much, guys. I could not have completed this restoration without you. Well, certainly not to the same standard, which might... I'm not sure if that's... A <laughs> but anyway, I couldn't have finished it without you. Thank you.
so I got all the residue, the tape residue and all that stuff and I should have just cleaned it and left it at that but no, I thought I could make it better, I couldn't um, I wasn't real happy with it, I think I made that part of it worse here I am applying those door card stickers that I created thanks to the images provided by the boys and uh, I think they look the part, I think the originals have a bit of a metallic finish to them but anyway, they'll do now here's all my spare parts. The seat backs, they needed a bit of filing as usual and you'll never get the colours to match properly, but they're okay. Again, the front bumper uh, took a little bit of noodling and a bit of filing, but I got that on there as well. And you see, I'm not so stupid as let my nephews play with this car, so it won't get ruined again, right? <laughs> right, anyway, back to putting it back together. Yeah, dashboard, motor in, glass in, things are going good. Yep, that's looking good. Peter put the interior in. Something's not right here. You're missing something, pal. Oh yeah, that's right. The bloody doors. What an idiot. Anyway, they were, they were a little bit fiddly to get back in, but I got them back in. Oh, yes, almost, almost, yes. Hooray! Now I get back to putting it back together again. That took longer than I thought it would. From what I could see before I pulled it apart, the tail lights were the only other detailing on this car. So red Posca pen comes to rescue again, and I did the tail lights. Once again, I didn't lose the little jewel headlights. A bit of white canopy glue, trying not to drop them, and a bit of fiddling about with the toothpick, and I got them back in all where they should be. So here we are back at the start with Uncle Phil's much loved and much abused by me, not him, Ford Mustang Fastback. Missing the front bumper, missing the seat backs, missing the sticker on the front that I guess I ripped off or something. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, this is what we started with and this is what we're left with now. As you can see, the case didn't go very well for me, but you just hold on a bit longer, we'll get to the actual car. Ready? Waiting, waiting. And the reveal. So these almost look funny without yellow decals on the side because everyone I've ever seen had yellow decals but anyway I think it looks a million bucks now I think it can take pride of place back on my shelf hopefully it would have impressed Uncle Phil I'm sure it, it impressed him more than when he found it with the seat backs missing out of it back in 1979 anyway I fixed it now so everything's good again right? right
Okay, so thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch my little video. I know there's a million videos on the internet and keeping up with all of them is hard, I know. So I really appreciate you choosing to watch my video. Thank you very much. I will be back next Friday with something else at 9.15. It'll be diecast related. I probably should throw that in. And um, <laughs> if you've liked what you've liked here, click on my head to subscribe, share it with a friend, and try one of these other videos that have appeared on your screen. I'd really appreciate it. See you next Friday at 9.15. Bye!